Banks brought that grittiness back to hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't I couldn't stand Bad Boy. I'm I'm keeping it real, y'all. Like, you know, I give Bad Boy their props. I give Diddy his props, but that just wasn't that wasn't my shit. I wasn't into that, man. Rough Rider Chronicles. I finally got around to watching episode three and four. God damn, I, I feel like <laughs> These last two episodes covered so much, it's going to be impossible for me to, like, recap this whole shit. And recap is not really my style anyway. Like, you know, I'm not that play-by-play -play type of reviewer where, you know, I just talk about every single thing that happened in the fucking documentary. I just pretty much go off the top of the head, what I felt watching it, what I got out of it, and that's what I'm bringing to you right now, man. So if, if you want a full recap of these next two episodes... Yeah, go go find somebody else's channel, because I'm not doing that shit here. A few things I learned watching episodes three and four of uh of the rough rider chronicles is uh the the famous jay-z dmx battle that took place that nobody has any footage of and i always wondered because they do have the footage of jay doing his shit but we never got to hear x you know what i mean like i first saw that shit on the backstage documentary uh you know that came out in 99 that covered the hard night life tour they showed jay's footage of freestyling but i'm always wondering why we never saw x and supposedly there was footage out there, but they just either got destroyed or there, there were so many theories out there as to why we never got to see this battle. And this documentary shine light on that because uh, the Rough Riders, uh, D and Y, didn't want the shit to be filmed because they said that they didn't want nobody filming X's shit so they could bite off of his shit. So they said, nah, nobody recorded. And of course, Dame Dash wouldn't be Dame Dash if he wasn't like, man, that, that's bullshit. Like, almost like, yeah, these niggas are scared. They just don't want to see their man get embarrassed and then get on tape or whatever. But word on the street was that it was a draw. Both of them came at each other. And listen, y'all, I'm more of a DMX fan than Jay-Z. But, yo, you got to call a spade a spade. Jay is nice. Jay has wordplay almost like no other. You know, X is that raw, gritty, just rough shit. You know what I mean? Totally contrasting styles. But battling, I can see how it could be a draw because I really can't see nobody beating Jay-Z in a battle. And I can't see nobody uh, beating X in a battle. So it's almost like the unstoppable force meets the immovable object but damn i would have loved to see the footage of the full fucking battle and we and uh i mean we and uh how's that <laughs> i said it wrong <laughs> i'm i'm not editing that shit out fuck it like i never make mistakes uh y and d shut that shit down no exceptions another thing i learned watching this is uh your boy swiss beats now i was under the impression that he produced all of X's uh, albums. I didn't know that there was these two other cats, uh, Grease, and I forgot the other nigga name, man. He he, he a light skinned nigga like myself. Um, they produced majority of his Dark and Hell is Hot, and Swiss didn't come till the end. See, I didn't know that. And now thinking about it, it makes sense because Swiss Beats has a certain sound. And when you listen to his Dark and Hell is Hot, you know what I'm saying? It sounds very un Swiss Beats like. So it makes sense. I said, uh huh. Learn something new every day. But that was kind of fucked up how that went down, too, because, you know, the, the two producers that came before Swiss, you know what I'm saying, they put in a lot of work, they put in, you know, a lot of time and effort into, you know, putting out the best material, and then here comes the boss's nephew who comes in, they say, hey, teach this nigga everything you know, and give him some shine, and he ends up taking over, so I, I can see the jealousy that can come in, I can see how I was like, damn, you know, you bring in your nephew, and I'm out the fucking door, but... They stuck around for a while, but Swiss got, like I said, I never knew about these two guys. I just always thought it was Swiss Beats. You think of DMX, you think of Swiss Beats. You know, when you watch the X versus Snoop battle, you think those are all Swiss Beats. You know what I'm saying? Not knowing that these other two gentlemen contributed to that. DMX. Oh, man. I, I know most of his story, but still, it's heartbreaking when you hear some of the shit that he went through and the, and the pain that he endured. And that's why that's why he's my favorite rapper, man. That's why I can relate to X the most out of anybody. Because most rappers, you know, they have to uh, put out a certain persona and a certain image of themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like like rap, like rap hip hop. Well, at least what hip hop used to be is an alpha male sport. You know what I'm saying? Even the women that come in, it's 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 alpha. You know what I'm saying? Rappers are alpha as fuck. You can't show weakness. You can't show vulnerability. I'm the toughest. I'm the baddest. I'm the rawest. I fuck the best, I get the most bitches, I get the most money. That, 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 that is the general image that most rappers try to try to put out there, even if they're not really like that, but they have to put that out there for that street cred, for that respect. But DMX was able to still have that street cred and still bear his soul, 
showed us his pain. You know what I'm saying? Almost like, I, I think X is almost like the Richard Pryor of rap. Because Richard Pryor did the same thing with his comedy. He put, he bared his fucking soul. He put his pain out there for you to laugh at. DMX is putting his pain out there for you to listen to and, and to connect to. And it's crazy. You know what? I'm going to give Jay-Z some respect because during the Hard Knock Life Tour, you know, as most of you may know, Jay was the headliner. You know what I'm saying? It was the Hard Knock Life Tour featuring Rough Riders and, uh, you know, uh, Method Man and Red Man was on that tour. But Jay was the headliner. But I give respect to Jay because how can you follow somebody like X? And Jay said that on the documentary. Jay-Z was like, yo, they really love that dude, man. Like, he has a connection with the crowd that I've never seen before. How do you fucking follow that? But of course, Jay-Z is Jay-Z. He still went out there and he fucking killed it. Brought out, you know, Rockefeller. Ooh, that would, yo, that would be another dope Chronicles to do is, uh, um... Uh, oh shit, I almost said Rough Rats, what is it, uh, I just had a brain fart, y'all, I just said it, and no, I don't smoke weed, Rockefeller, thank you, thank you, remember, they need to do a Rockefeller Chronicles, but I, I think it's too much of a sensitive subject, because Dame don't like to talk on it, I'm pretty sure Jay, he put that behind him, Jay's living that billionaire Oprah life right now with Beyonce, you know what I'm saying, I don't know why I, where I got Oprah life from, <laughs> but Jay, Jay's living that billionaire life, so I can't see nobody really participating in a Rockefeller Chronicles, except for maybe Memphis Bleak and um and Freeway and probably Beanie, but Dame and Jay, I, I don't see them cooperating with that, and that shit would be whack if you don't have their input. But it would be nice to see, though, you know what I'm saying? But um, where the fuck was I going with that? <laughs> but yeah, the drug issues, you know what I'm saying? Staying in trouble. I'm pretty sure for for D and Y, I'm pretty sure they was pulling their hair out dealing with X because. Right now, he's the number one breadwinner. I mean, you have the locks, and you have drag, and you have uh, Eve, who I'm going to get to in a second. You know what I'm saying? You, you have you have this roster of all-stars, but X is the Michael Jordan of that roster. And it's like, they, they, they had to keep X on a short leash because he was always doing crazy shit. But still, you know, you, you can't, when you think of Rough Riders, you think DMX. You know what I'm saying? Back then, before I knew the backstory of Rough Riders, I thought DMX started Rough Riders. I thought that was his shit. Which it was kind of crazy because episode um, episode three ends with them talking about how now that Rough Riders is on top of the world, you know that they, they they put Def Jam back on and they signed the um, the deal with Interscope, you know, to really expand the brand. And it's like Rough Riders now is on top of the world, and X is a big part of that. You know, without X, you would not have that success. So naturally, he's like, listen, I want ownership of the company. I, I want to make a percentage. Uh, I want to make a percentage of this shit and they're like nah <laughs> like we, we don't mind giving you a percentage sometime but not right now and that left x kind of bitter so now that's where episode four and five is going to pick up and shows the decline all right so let's get to eve <laughs> hey y'all i don't know how many of y'all saw uh the locks where well, they told i think they was on drink champs and they told the story about mike tyson and eve so now every time i see eve <laughs> i cannot look at eve and not hear Mike Tyson saying, yo, I'll fuck the shit out of you, Eve. <laughs> I wish, yo, I wish I could have been there to see that, y'all. Because, yo, like the locks, yo, the, them niggas don't play. Them niggas from Yonkers, you know, the average motherfucker couldn't just go up to them and say that to Eve, man. But they was like, yo, but this is Iron Mike. This is Iron Mike. You know what I'm saying? This is the champ. Anybody else, you know, they would have been fucked up, yo. But because it was Iron Mike or Eve, you got to take that one. I wish I could have seen the look on Eve's face when Mike said that to her. Eve is a pit bull in a skirt, you know, saying Eve seems like she's nothing to play with. But when Iron Mike comes up to you and says, I'll fuck the shit out of you, I think that scares about 90% of people on this planet. You know what I'm saying? So I wish I could have seen Eve's face. I'm watching Eve's story and I'm like, you know what? This reminds me of how what's missing in hip hop now. Well, I can't even call it hip hop no more. I don't know what the fuck this shit is now. But it's missing in the rap game now is that female that brings that balance of sexiness, but yet, um, but yet be feminine with it, but at the same time be hard with what niggas fuck with her too. You know what I'm saying? Like you got Cardi B and Megan now who know this to them, they do anything, they're, they're successful, I applaud them for that. But they're following that same style as, as Foxy Brown and Lil' Kim. You know what I'm saying? Eve is that balance of Latifah and MC Light. While yet having that sexiness like a like a Kim or a Foxy, but not being as explicit. You know what I'm saying? Eve is a fucking MC. You know what I'm saying? Even though Megan and Cardi can spit, but you can't call them MCs. You know what I'm saying? I, I think of them as, 
just explicit rappers. You know what I'm saying? Eve is a fucking MC. She can she can go toe to toe with niggas like they said when they first brought her in. She had a battle drag on. You know what I'm saying? And held her own. And that's what's missing right now. And you know Eve did have an MC light and the Queen Latifah, but the, the girl rappers now feel like they have to wear revealing shit. They have to twerk, shake their ass. You know you know have stuff jiggling all over the place. For them to make a name for themselves, you know, in order to showcase their skills, they have to show some skin. And there's nobody out right now that a little girl could look up to and say, okay, yeah, yo, she's dope. I, I want to be like that. They just have Cardi and you got Megan right now. Oh, boy. The next generation of girls are in trouble. The story about how Puff dissed DMX, I, I knew about that story already, you know, how because X was saying how Puff told him to his face that, you know, he wasn't marketable. He, he, was, too, he was too rough around the edges. And he couldn't fuck with X. And X was like, always like, you know, I respect Diddy for saying to my face that he wasn't fucking with me, but he still got the locks. Which is funny because the locks are as rough as X, but times three. But I guess Diddy saw something with the locks that he can do, but that, that shit didn't last long. Because Diddy, listen, I was never really a bad boy fan. Besides Big, I wasn't I wasn't a bad boy fan. I, I wasn't feeling mace. I wasn't into all that pretty boy shit, you know, with the lip gloss and the shiny suits and, you know, the dancing and the champagne popping. I wasn't with that shit. My style was more, I mean, I'm not a street nigga, but I love street level rap, you know. I'm into Nas. I'm into the woo, you know what I'm saying? Big, Big was street, but, you know, but, but Puff made him... Uh, a pretty nigga, even though Big was ugly as shit, but he made Big a pretty nigga as far as the style and shit. And X brought that grittiness back to hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't, I couldn't stand Bad Boy. I'm, I'm keeping it real, y'all. Like you know, I give Bad Boy their props. I give Diddy his props, but that just wasn't, that wasn't my shit. I wasn't into that, man. X brought that shit back, and that's why to this day, that's my favorite fucking MC. So yeah, y'all, that, that's my two cents on episodes three and four. I know there's probably a lot that I didn't cover. But fuck it, you know what I'm saying? I, overall, I dig this fucking series, man. I can't wait to watch episodes four and five. And look forward to the next Chronicles. Well, y'all, So, y'all, what do you think the next Chronicles is going to be? What do you feel about this Rough Riders Chronicles? Uh, comment freely below. If you like and dig the content, hit that like and subscribe notification bell in the corner. This is Rashad G. Sign up, this motherfucker. Ugh.